Welcome to Chennai, formerly known as Madras. This major metropolitan city of 8 million, located in southern India, is unique in the global marketplace as host to three major industries, the automobile industry, the information technology industry, and education. The crown jewel of Chennai's educational circuit is IIT Madras. Founded by the Indian government, the Indian Institutes of Technology are the country's elite engineering schools, known and respected throughout the world. For instance, IIT graduates provide the backbone of technological development in Silicon Valley and are on the faculties of engineering schools throughout North America. IIT Madras's Sylvan 620-acre campus is carved out of a forest on the outskirts of Chennai. Here, a coalition of electrical engineering and computer science faculty collaborate in a group called TNET, which is an amazing source of both disruptive technologies and technology companies. Indian professors with undergraduate degrees from the IITs and other Indian engineering schools, and with PhDs from Berkeley, Caltech, Carnegie Mellon, Duke, Stanford, and other leading American universities are working together to achieve TNET's overarching goal of doubling the per capita income in rural India. We spoke with founder Professor Junjin Bala and TNET's executive officer, IIT Madras alumnus, V. Varadarajan, about TNET. Professor Junjinvala's efforts and accomplishments have been recognized by the government of India with one of the highest awards bestowed on citizens. We have heard so much about TNET uh, in terms of really what one might call the disruptive technologies that it has been developing and also I think its unique uh, characteristics of tailoring products to the nature of the Indian market and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you came to this idea and how you're focusing on the Indian market in particular. If you just look at the income levels in India and the United States, you get a picture of what the difference is. India is a billion people, yes, in some sense a very large market. But if you really drill down where, what, well, who are these billion people? We have uh, uh, 300 million urban people, 700 million rural people. What is the household income in urban areas? If you take 300 million people, about 200 million of them their incomes will be of the order of seven to eight thousand rupees per month, uh -huh. less than two hundred dollars per month. So everything that they do has to be within that. So any product that you are trying to offer it has to be that recognize that incomes are less than two hundred dollars per month. If you have suddenly started to look at people who earn more than fifty thousand rupees per month, a thousand dollars, you find that out of those 300 million people, there is probably less than 20 million people. So suddenly your market becomes very, very small. So the market is large only if you really look at that income level. Similarly, in rural areas, the situation gets even worse because out of the 700 million people, about 150 million households, 90% of them have income levels of less than 3,000 rupees per month, $60 per month. Now, what can you spend for that? Now, trying to develop products and services for this market is very different from trying to develop products and services for markets which can, whose household incomes are $2,000 per month, $3,000 per month. I think that's a primary differentiator. Uh, leave aside all other cultural and other issues. This is the primary differentiator. So anything that you develop, anything which is a huge success in the West, can become a reasonable success in terms of 20, 30 million, but as soon as you are not talking about huge success in India, mm -hmm. like the way telecom has become, yes. you are talking about a price point very, very different. For example, in telephony today uh, in India, mm -hmm. India is the fastest growing telecom market. One of the reasons is that we offer telephony at less than one cent per minute. You work on what the average in US, it will probably five to seven cents per minute, ten cents per minute. You go to Europe, it is more like 15 uh, euro cents per minute. Okay. So nowhere you find this kind of price point. Tremendous difference. And at this price point, how do you really run a business? What kind of technology is needed? What kind of business and processes are required? Such that you can actually serve at one cent per minute and still make money. 
So our first goal when we started, we started with how do we get India 100 million telephones? When India had only about 8 to 10 million telephones, growing at 1 million lines per month, per year, and we thought that in 10 years we need to grow to 100 million. And it looked impossible doing that that time. So whatever we need to do in terms of technological disruption, and primarily it came from the price point, um, we needed to do. And we of course had to work on policy level, so we worked at policy level. So this was the first phase of our activity. Good morning. I am Varad Rajan. I am the executive officer for Telecommunication Network Group of IIT Madras. What I am going to be showing in this room and the next three or four rooms are product and services developed by Telecommunication Network Group of Professors. There are about 15 professors and they have, as a result of this technology, have developed about 14, 15 companies that have incubated. One of the first products that we have developed as a result of this development is this car deck DIU unit, which is deck interface unit. This is being developed by a company called Midas Communications Private Limited. This box, now we can put in a district or taluk headquarters where the fiber optic cable or a trunk telephone backline, backbone is available. The RAS combines voice and data and come through this card feeds it to that compact base station which is typically mounted on a 45 meter tall tower. From there, it broadcasts 1.9 gigahertz signal. At the other end, somebody can put an antenna on top of his house and download the signal. From here, each customer can get 70 kbps of undivided bandwidth. 35 kbps goes for data, another 35 kbps goes for, uh, inter for, for internet. If the data, the, the voice is not there, the entire 70 kbps can come for internet. That is basically the technology of the DECT standard. We have expanded the range of this by adding a, a compact, uh, by, by adding a relay-based station. This is the signal from the uh, broadband car deck and has the, takes another 10 kilometer radius. So essentially, now using that car deck, we can now cover 35 kilometers radius from the hub. This is essentially covers about 250, 350 villages in the plains of India. This takes only 8 watts of power. So IAT has developed a solar panel to give 48 hours of main source of power. This has also 8 hour battery backup. Then now this is about a 10 year old technology. What we have now is a broadband product which is now tested for 12 kilometer distance. This can give 256 kbps for each customer. This has 4000 uh, customers can be connected at one time. Whereas the initial product that you saw connects 1000 customers and each person gets 70 kbps whereas here each person gets 256 kbps. This has not been deployed yet, it has been developed, it has not been deployed yet. This portion of this uh, room is a uh, fixed wireless local loop. Some of the features again of this is each channel gets only 250 milliwatts of power. As a result, the whole box can operate with a one kilowatt of power supply. It does not need air conditioning. So we can have a two kVA generator standing by even in areas where the power supply is not reliable and have it operating continuously. What we have here now is a DSL technology to take internet using the existing telephone lines. In India, we have a legacy company with 30, 40 year old copper buried uh, in the ground with the crystal pair connections. So DSL technology, which is looking for a good quality copper, did not work well. As a result, IIT re-engineered this. Now we have a DSL2 technology which can give 24 Mbps of data through existing telephone lines, 95% of them. That we have also byproduct of uh, this development, uh, uh, modem and routers, perhaps almost at the cost of half the price of the modem that is available in the market. And as we start working on connecting every village in India, we found that connectivity is only a first step in rural areas. The priority in rural areas is health, education, and livelihood. 
and therefore many of our ventures started looking at health in rural areas, education in rural areas, livelihood opportunities in rural areas. In this room, we are going to see the services that are being provided using the hardware. Today, we have our goal as doubling per capita rural GDP of India and building a few billion dollar telecom product companies in India. What the broadcasting from that room is received by that fixed remote station that is typically mounted on top of the house. From there, it takes the, the signal and gives it to the telephone as well as the computer. So if the telephone is not there, the entire 70 kbps can come to the computer. As what about even though this technology has been developed about 10 years ago, till five years ago, nothing much happened. So IIT incubated another company called N-Log Communications Private Limited. N-Log Communication is an internet service provider. They have a business model based on what worked in India. They have raised a uh, franchisee in each district who they call local service partner and this local service partner take care of one district. He in turn, like our cable TV operator, provides internet to individual customers. These uh, individual customers can also be kiosk operator very similar to uh, our telephone operator, TDPC operator. This kiosk operator in turn aggregate the demand for computer and internet service in a village of 2,000 people and makes a living out of it by earning about five to 6,000 rupees from these services. He gives major six areas of major services. One is education, second is health delivery, third, livelihood creation like photography, uh, desktop publishing and things like that. Fourth, e-governance where the backbone of the government is available for e-governance. Fifth is communication, sixth is education, uh, enter entertainment, and uh, games. So in all these six services, if he makes 500,000 rupees, he makes anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 rupees and makes a living out of it. So Enlog took this first to a village and uh, developed this product. And we got a few more feedback and a few, developed a few more companies. One of the first feedback we got is, sir, everything in English. We don't have people who understand English as much. So we developed with a company called CK Shakti, a dual language office suit. Today we have developed it in eight different Indian languages, local language as well as English. The cost is almost 2,000 rupees. The look and feel is very similar to Microsoft Office, but Everything is developed from scratch. And we can develop in any language in about 90 days. Even that was a difficulty in our villages because 50% of our, play, our villages can't even read our own languages. So what we did was, using a web camera that we provide in the kiosk, developed a compression technology. So one minute of the talk of the villager in front of the camera is compressed into a 100 KB file and sent as an attachment into the, in the email by the kiosk operator. So you don't need a person to read and write what this man says to uh, communicate. So any illiterate also can to, uh, make use of this technology. In addition to that, one, another feedback we got is, sir, our children are failing in the 10th grade school final examination. Normal uh, pass percentage in our school is uh, about 30 percent. What we have done is developed a tutorial for based on the Tamil Nadu board and deployed this in about 18 villages last year where about 800 children took uh, part in this. When we knew that we can have an audio, video and a slide streaming from the server at as low as 21 kbps, we decided to develop a tutorial in all the subjects. So last year when we tried this, out of 800 children who came and took this, those who were there for 90 days learning this, the pass percentage was 100%. This year, we are planning on deploying it to about 8,000 children in Tamil Nadu school, but we do have a drawback in this system because the children are supposed to pay the kiosk operator 25 rupees a month to come there for 15 days every other day. Some of the children don't even have the money. So what we have done is we asked the kiosk operator to market to at least one third of the people who come there the rest of the people we try and get donations and subsidize this. Novatium is another company that we have developed to 
develop thin clients. See, whenever the kiosk operator is successful today, he is going by the second and third computer about 20 or 25,000 rupees. Instead of that, we have developed this thin client for 4,000 rupees plus a normal monitor about 3,500 rupees. For 7,500 rupees, he can ha have a second and third computer. So five, uh, five more people can sit in front of this computer and the, again, the initial cost comes down. When we deploy this 256 kbps uh, broadband codec, the first computer itself can be like this. So the initial investment for the kiosk operator comes down from 50,000 to about 40,000 rupees. Now, we also have developed a multi-party multi video conferencing software. Multi-party video conferencing software normally takes about 5,000 rupees and it needs about 128 kbps bandwidth. What we have done is proprietary framework is developed like the compression technology and another company called Woofs has developed this. This here, at as low as 24 kbps, you can have multi-party video conferencing. This is a live video model where a distributed classroom of 100 people can be taught simultaneously by a lecturer. That's what I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, can you go ahead and start the lecture, please? And uh, this is the next slide. Introducing Chinat Group, Incubating Entrepreneurs in the U.S. I, I am one of the students, so I have a doubt. Can you uh, go to the previous slide, please? Okay, sir. This is the previous slide. Can you show the arrow to the last line in that slide, please? Oh, this is the last line. Ashok at Chinat Restaurant. So this kind of a quick interaction is possible. This is the demonstration of the uh, movie coming through the telephone line. Each movie takes only about 1.8 megabytes. So if you have a 24 Mbps modem, so if the telephone company has this modem and the hardware that you saw in the other room, they can be movie operators. Thank you. We will go to the next room. What we have here is an automatic teller machine that we have developed in collaboration with ICICA Bank. ICICA Bank want to go to the villages and establish branches, but became too expensive. And the automatic teller machine that is available from the rest of the world is almost six to eight lakhs. They said if we can develop an automatic teller machine for one hundred thousand rupees or less, uh, they said we can do it. So what we have done is develop a automatic teller machine for about sixty thousand rupees. Some of the special features of this is it can do fingerprint identification. So the fingerprint of the villager is. Uh, is already registered in a signature so that identifies the villager even if he is not educated. It can also deliver soiled notes. It has a sensor mechanism that senses if two soil notes get stuck and it abandons the calculation and restarts it. So this is a machine that sits in next to the computer in the kiosk. This costs only about 60,000 rupees. As against this, we have now a next version of this happening. Here, we have moved the computer also into this LCD uh, um, machine, and the fingerprint is there. We also have a swipe card and a printer. So this is just developed about a week ago, and it has not been tested, whereas this is being tested in three different locations. Thank you. TNET's innovation in banking and other arenas are intended to help poor and uneducated segments of the population gain access to the global marketplace. Telemedicine applications are another among TNET's products developed to meet the health, education, and livelihood needs of India's rural population. Telemedicine enables doctors from anywhere in India or the world to view the vital signs of patients in a remote Indian village that is not served by healthcare professionals. We are very, very interested in science currently by one of our companies called Noetium here in Chennai, which is actually providing a computer with all the software and with the broadband connection at around 400 to 450 rupees per month net. That improves the cost of computer, improves connectivity, improves everything. We are trying that out. Now those kind of things are what is needed if you want to make a difference. Same time we are looking at can India create a few billion dollar product companies, telecom product companies, we are known for our services company, but we are looking at can we focus on product companies. And finally, we want to see that India get in one or two um, areas become technologies, world's best in technology. That's the kind of vision with which we are working on. That's a neat segue into the next topic, how TNET is, will be connected with the larger world outside the IIT and outside India. We run, from day one, we have established the industry. 
from IIT we are driving that. We have had commercial success. But I am trying to say we are still early stage as far as the commercial success is concerned. It's the next five years we should see plenty of this. And you should see really becoming a phenomenon. Uh, we probably have all the linkages we still, I think, commercially, it has succeeded very well. I mean, our wireless and local loop is some $200 million per year. But I think it's still far away. Uh, the key thing is to go to the next step. And uh, um, from, we'll first focus on emerging markets, really get into that. Uh -huh. And as we are consolidating, many of the companies that we have created are becoming strong enough as a result of getting large market to start to dabble into products which can not only be relevant in emerging markets but also in the world. By learning how to develop products at a price point very different from what is available in the West, it gives them an immense advantage and that's what we're trying to do. TNET's story is about how knowledge grows and how innovation happens when this new knowledge interacts with different markets. IIT Madras's professors brought leading-edge knowledge that they had helped generate in universities in the United States back to India. Motivated by their desire to help the country, they used their knowledge to lower costs, to work to a price point to enable the large but lower income population in rural India to communicate with the world. TNET has now added the realistic goal of developing billion-dollar product-oriented companies that could serve the needs of developed markets, focusing on tailoring advanced technology to serve basic human needs has created new and potentially highly profitable opportunities. Ultimately, TNET's story is about how the world can benefit because of the connections that institutions of higher learning create between innovation ecosystems operating in different countries and in very different markets.